If you followed this YouTube channel for any length of time, you know that I like to tell people why it is that I'm right and they're wrong. But today, I'd like to do something a little bit different. I'd like to talk about a time that I made a comment where I was wrong. A long time ago, really not all that long ago, I left a comment somewhere, don't know where, don't remember anything about it other than what I said. I said that cameras, like compact cameras specifically, but cameras don't need flashes. People who need flashes, they're relying on that as a crutch because I always thought a camera flash was something that you used if you were a normie who didn't know how to operate a camera and you were trying to take pictures in a dark room and you had no clue what you were doing. So of course, the onboard flash on the camera blasts everything in the room and lets you take a picture. Usually a really bad picture because it'd be a really powerful flash that you had no control over and it would go BOOM! and everything would just turn white and people would look ugly and flat. Yeah, I mean, I took my fair share of really terrible pictures. I used to have a Kodak DC3200 digital camera and this thing had a flash that would blow your eyes out. I mean, it was astonishingly way too powerful for what it was. So I always thought of camera flashes as something that people used when they didn't know what they were doing basically something for amateurs and I knew that flashes had their use in the studio but those are off-camera flashes so I never thought of an on-camera flash as something that you would ever use as a professional I was wrong because I based my opinions on limited knowledge and understanding so what ultimately happened is that I started playing with flashes on my cameras I started using them at a low light level to see what would happen. You know, daytime, that kind of stuff. Um, just general experimentation with the on-camera flash. And what I found is that the on-camera flash is an extremely useful tool. Now the problem is, if you get all up in your face, like I got a cell phone here, you know, if you get all up in your face with, with, a, with a light, then yeah, of, of course it's going to look really, really bad you know, because that's stupid. But, like, the lighting in this video is not ideal. I, I haven't got this set up quite the way I want it. But, like, this doesn't look so good because there's nasty shadows there and I could take this light, you know, not do this, but instead do something to fill, like that, and it looks a little bit better, right? It, it doesn't have to be much. So, experimentation with things like that made a huge difference in my opinion. I completely changed my mind once I had taken some photographs where I used the on-camera flash as a fill light during daylight hours. That seems to be where the on-camera flash is most useful. I had always thought of it as a loser trying to take pictures in a dark room tool, but the truth is, the actual best use of it is someone who knows what they're doing trying to get a fill light, especially at like noon during the day. <laughs> I took some portraits for someone, they were graduating, and they wanted, you know, graduation pictures just around campus. So I followed them around with a camera and took pictures of them. Unfortunately, the time that they were available to do this was during the middle of the day. So sunlight coming straight down, like straight down. This thing really doesn't have a strong enough light, but straight down, you know, the worst possible setting. And <clears throat> anybody who's tried to take pictures in direct sunlight at noon knows that it's, it's kind of a losing battle. They're gonna look bad due to the harsh shadows. At the time I had no bounce boards and I didn't use the flash. And later on, a lot of the pictures that I took in the sunlight had serious problems that I could not correct because the massive contrast. Cameras just don't have that level of dynamic range. I could not correct them fully in post. Um, it, it led to all kinds of nuisances with these big heavy shadows that were not flattering. The best pictures I took 
were the pictures where we sat down somewhere, like on stairs, or uh, there was a, a rock wall that we sat on. Those things where it was under some trees, in the shade, you know, paths that were not fully lit, that kind of thing. And while I did take some really nice outdoor photos, um, I had some cameras with me and I took some nice outdoor photos as I walked away from the shoot of just some of the paths in the sunlight, um, some black and whites, that really nice, rich contrast. They look great, but the portraits were a problem. I probably took a thousand pictures that day because I knew that I was going to have some trouble and I took a lot of pictures. See, now I have an off-camera flash that I use as a slave flash. And so I'll do the thing where you hold the camera with an onboard flash on low power and the offboard flash over here. So if you go to my website, jodybruchon.com, look at the photography. There's actually a whole section called Brittany Davis at Riverside Park, where Brittany Davis, huh, who would have guessed, Brittany Davis is a singer, songwriter, who also plays guitar, makes her own music, and so on, and she needed some pictures, and um, I did them. Uh, it, that was actually, now that I'm thinking about it, that was a day where I was like, hey, want to do a photo shoot? She was like, yeah, let's do a photo shoot. So we just went out somewhere, we got some outfits, and we took some pictures. And a lot of those pictures, I used the offboard flash, and it was extremely helpful to have that. But to trigger it, you still need the on-camera flash because I don't have the fancy radio flashes. Um, I don't have any of that stuff that, that does the remote triggering. It's just I have the cheap slave flash type. And that was an immensely useful tool, but without the on-camera flash, I couldn't have done it. Now, even if I didn't have the off-board flash, the on-camera flash would have still been useful. There is one picture where there's a bridge, right? She's kind of sitting on it, and she's grabbing the railing and leaning back like this, and looking at the camera. Now the sun is coming from here. So all of her features here are lit very brightly, but then everything here down is basically black because the sun is completely blowing out all of that. Having that flash let me fill in the shadow area so you can actually still see her. So it lowers the contrast of the scene. Very useful. Anyway, the point is, I made a comment many years ago saying that onboard flashes on cameras are stupid and dumb and that people who need them or want them or whatever just don't know what they're doing. And I was wrong. Live and learn, right? So let this be a lesson to you. Perhaps don't criticize something until you know enough about it and perhaps you've tried it yourself. But this is in no way meant to say that the other stuff I've said is wrong. It happens that this one thing was wrong, but I do try at least to do my research and make sure I'm correct about stuff before I go posting videos about it. Uh, internet comments, maybe not so much, but hey, whatever. Anyway, um, at, at the end of this video, I would like to announce something. I am going to start a new series. It is going to be called Don't Read the Comments, in which I read the comments. Um, one of the comment chains I found today is particularly amusing to me. Um, at least, you know, you're watching this and you're probably interested in photography or videography. If you are... You will love this stupid conversation that I found on F-Stoppers. Yeah, man, people are just astonishing. Anyway, I'm going to make a humorous series called Don't Read the Comments, and watch my channel, subscribe to it, click that silly bell icon, you know, all that stuff. Um, also, I am migrating my stuff over to BitChute um, slowly, because BitChute still has some upload issues. But uh, I am in the process of getting moved over there, and I'll start putting stuff over there regularly, too. But for now, on YouTube, subscribe and bell me, okay? And I look forward to seeing you in that series. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. Oh, man. Whenever you start talking, what happens is um, everything just starts itching, and you need to cough. It's like the second you need to concentrate, everything goes wrong.